Hey, Real Life Church, how are you guys doing? Good Woo. morning. We are so excited. I feel like I say that the same exact way every single week. You do. Actually. I'm going to try to say it different. He does. Hey, Real Life Church, what's up? There, is that better? Hey. Um, <laughs> we are going to worship, and we are going to hear another authentic community message this week, and we are going to have a good time in our microchurch groups. Um, yes. Yeah. So without further ado, stand up, lay down, get your flags out, dance around. Um, <laughs> I did mean to rhyme that. Oh, wow. Yes. It's pretty good. It's intentional. It's very intentional. We're going to sing some worship. <laughs> Let's get into worshiping our Father because he's worthy of our praise. Amen? Amen. <laughs>
God, we just praise you. We thank you. We worship you, Lord. You are good. You are worthy of our praise. Thank you for breaking our chains, Father, for breaking more and more chains each and every day, each and every minute, of every hour, Lord. You're setting people free. Let us run in your freedom. Let us run forward to you in our freedom, Father God, and that we can just, uh, along the way, we can just encourage others we can help you set other people free that we just run in community together in unity together in love with your son jesus christ father we just thank you and we praise you for your love for us for the sacrifice you made for us and we just ask that as the word comes this morning that you anoint it that you just allow your spirit to flow through it and that you allow our community to be encouraged by it and that you uh, expose things where we need to grow and that you expose places where we need to repent and you expose places where, where, where we can be built up in more knowledge and understanding of our identity in you and our identity to each other. With that, Father, we pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. 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 Enjoy the message, church. Hey, Real Life, good morning. How we doing out there in microchurch land? It's good to be with you, coming at you whichever way that I am. Uh, I'm just thankful to God for this time that we've been in because being in this quarantine business has, I think, accelerated a lot of things in the kingdom. And we're going to look back on this and say, man, I didn't love being forced to stay home or to just gather in small church or whatever it was, but God worked in my life in a way that it would never happen otherwise. So I'm thankful for that. I'm going to pray for us, and we're going to launch right into authentic community, and we're going to talk about what might be the biggest topic yet. I know I say that every week, but I truly believe it when I say it, so I'm not contradicting myself. Let me pray for us. Father God, thank you, Lord, uh, for everything you're doing in our lives. Thank you that you're moving in our nation, Lord. Thank you that you're moving in your church. You're calling us to rise up. You're calling us to come to attention and to line up with you and to keep in step with you, Lord. And so I pray right now you would open our hearts, open our ears, open our minds for what you would say. Holy Spirit, speak to us this morning, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. So authentic community. We've been having a great time. I think God has been bringing us into some authentic community, even as we talk about it week after week, and I'm so thankful for that. But we talked about, uh, you know, the first week we just set it up, we talked about authentic community as a family and God's family and how important it is to have older brothers and sisters and, and mothers and fathers raising up the little ones. We talked about the unconditional love of God, how that is the secret sauce of authentic community. We'll see that again in just a second as I read a, a verse to you. We talked about if we're going to you know, walk in unconditional love, then we're going to have to learn to speak the truth in love. And, and really share who we are with each other and share the truth with each other about what we see in each other. And uh, that really sets up and brings up the very next piece because um, without this one thing, there wouldn't be a lot of togetherness in the supernatural togetherness that the Holy Spirit's working in us in authentic community. And that is, drum roll please, if you can think of it, shout it out. 
Here it is. I'm about to lay it on you. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Forgiveness. Some of you have to forgive me for that because you're like, don't be stupid. My time is valuable. But, you know, forgiveness is so important in authentic community. Let's think about that definition again. Authentic community is the supernatural togetherness of a group of Jesus followers caused by the Holy Spirit's work in them to produce unconditional love for each other. Why is forgiveness so important? Well, number one, unconditional love by definition includes forgiveness. We read that, remember 1 Corinthians 13. I'll go there quick in verse 4 and 5. It says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. And you're like, check, 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 check. What does it have to do with forgiveness? Keep reading. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. Here it is. It is not easily angered, and it keeps no record of wrong. So forgiveness is just unloading the anger. Forgiveness allows us to be healed so that we're not easily offended or not easily angered because there's so much healed up in us. But forgiveness is really erasing the record of wrongs, and we find it right there in the, in the definition of love. And uh, how many of you know God the Father is love, and he so graciously forgave us of all our sins? If we're going to grow up in him, if he's the measuring stick, if Jesus is what we're aiming to be, you know, the image of God in us, uh, we're going to have to learn how to forgive because that is love. That is at the heart and the core of love is I'm going to forgive you when you hurt me. I'm going to forgive you when you offend me. I'm just going to walk in forgiveness because my father has forgiven you. Who am I to not forgive? Amen? Amen. Very good. Here's another reason, though. Because togetherness won't stay togetherness unless there is forgiveness, right? I mean, we know this. Why? Because people people things up. That's my definition of people. People are the people who go around and people things up. Like when people are involved and we get close together in proximity, how many of you know that I've got some rough edges, you got some rough edges, now we're coming together in unconditional love, God's putting us into the same place in unity, we're we're trying to serve each other, we're trying to speak the truth in love, and the next thing you know, I speak the truth in almost love, but not quite love, or maybe it wasn't quite true and it bothered you or offended you, or or whatever it is, but it doesn't take long when we have all this togetherness for there to be an opportunity for offense. You know, the enemy wants to create offense. He'll even create it where there wasn't one. He'll get into your head. He'll say, what did they mean by that? What what, what was that really? And, And he'll stir something up, and he'll use this brother or sister or that brother or sister to tell you this, that, or the other thing that they heard. Next thing you know, there's a fence. And when there's a fence... A lot of times there's, there's anger or there's woundedness. There's a hurt. You know, we're offended largely because it hurts us. And we need to forgive or the togetherness won't stay togetherness. We have to forgive if we're going to walk in community. Um, it would be like Survivor or something where the tribe just keeps voting people out one by one. Unless we learn how to forgive, uh, there's not going to be very many of us left standing for very long. If we're going to walk in authentic relationships, we're just going to offend each other and hurt each other. Look at uh, Colossians 3, 12 through 14. I love this little passage because it does show us that love is the secret sauce, but it also shows us how important forgiveness is. And Paul is writing this as he's talking. If, If you look at the flow of his thoughts, he's saying, put off the old man, put on the new man. Let's walk together And and this is what he says. He says, verse 12, Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourself with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Verse 13, make allowance for each other's faults. Like, whoa, whoa, make allowance. You know, there's room in authentic community for you to not be perfect. Thank God, right? There's room for me to not be perfect because 
Love and walking in love is going, because of patience, because of tenderhearted mercies, all those things he just mentioned, kindness, humility, gentleness, we're going to make room for each other's faults. Like, I'm signing up for authentic community knowing that you're not perfect and you're probably going to offend me and that I'm not perfect and I'm probably going to offend you. And, and it's just the way it works. But he says, uh, make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Forgive anyone who offends you. Forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. If we're going to walk in a community, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, <laughs> cousins, we're, we are going to have to forgive each other. It's just the way it works. I remember preaching on this years ago, early on, in the early days of real life. And we were Praise Fellowship Jamestown then, and I was saying the same thing. I said, if we're going to be walking together in an authentic community, if we're going to be the church that Jesus paid for, we're going to have to forgive each other because we are going to hurt each other and we are going to offend each other. And I said, you know, even like before this is over, you know, somebody may need to forgive me. And little did I know that there was literally somebody in the seat who had just been hurt and offended by me. Right before the service started, I was talking to them, and they were sharing something, and a little bit because of my ADHD and a little bit because of the timing, and, and there's a lot going on, I was kind of looking beyond them and looking for the opportunity to, what's next, I got to get up there, and, and I didn't pay attention to this individual like I should have, and it hurt them, and... Uh, they needed to forgive me, but I needed to repent, and we needed to be reconciled, and, and thank God that worked out. But there's just no way for us to walk together without needing to forgive. It's just really that simple. So here's a definition of forgiveness, and there's a lot of definitions, and we've heard a lot of them because it's not overly simple. There's some complexity to it, but here's a definition. It says, forgiveness is a conscious deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment or vengeance toward a person or group who has harmed you, regardless of whether they actually deserve your forgiveness. Uh, you know, the hardest people to forgive are the ones that we're pretty sure don't deserve it because they haven't had a change of heart, they haven't asked for forgiveness, they don't want our forgiveness, and yet we have to make a conscious decision to release the anger, the resentment, the vengeance, the bitterness. What is the vengeance? The vengeance is, I'm going to make sure that you are punished. Forgiveness is like releasing somebody from the legal obligation that they should be punished for the sin they committed against you. Really, Jesus died for their sin that they committed against you Jesus is willing to forgive them for that very sin, and maybe he already has by the time you're wrestling with forgiveness. But God says to us, the same way we forgive others is the same way he's going to forgive us. So there's this tie-in between our relationship with forgiving other people and God forgiving us. We need to release the bitterness. We need to release the anger. We need to just say, let that go. But listen, this is huge. We've got to understand this. Many of you know this is true. Forgiveness is a decision. It is an act of the will and not a feeling. We make up our minds to, we decide, I'm going to forgive, fill in the blank, X, Y, Z, whoever it is, whatever it is. I am going to forgive because I can't afford to hang on to this bitterness, anger, resentment. Really what it boils down to is once you forgive, once you say, you know what, I release them, I'm going to speak life and blessing, I don't feel like it, my feelings will catch up. The feelings don't catch up right away because there's a wound there. Forgiveness is saying, I'm going to allow God in this process of me walking it out over time, continually 
agreeing with the decision I made in the first place, an act of my will, when I decided to forgive, I'm just going to keep renewing that. Every time something comes up from within me, I'm going to say, yep, I forgave them, I forgive them, I will forgive them in the future. I don't want to see them punished. I just want to see God's best, and I want this thing in me to be healed. As we do that, it's almost as if there's this wound, and deep in the wound is like uh, the tip of a thorn. I literally dug one out of my hand today. I dug it out of there because I know if I leave it in there, it's only going to get worse over time. And in the moment of digging, it actually was more painful than leaving it alone, but I know that over time, that wound will never heal unless I get that thing out of there. That's really what forgiveness is. It's getting out of us the tip of the thorn that was left behind when somebody hurt us, offended us, did something wrong. So really, forgiveness doesn't depend on a change in the offender, but it is, depends on the change of the forgiver, the change that I want to have happen in me. That's why I'm forgiving, because I can't hold on to it. It's, it's like taking, uh, you've heard this before, it's like taking poison, drinking poison and expecting it to hurt the other person. <laughs> it's like, I'm the one with, that has to live with anger and bitterness and that stuff is toxic in me and it's no good. And so just to want to be healed to, so I can be a person who is walking in forgiveness, walking in healing, more and more like Jesus, I gotta forgive. We gotta forgive. If we're gonna walk in community, we have to say today is the day that I decide that I am going to live a life of forgiveness because people will people things up. It's guaranteed. But here's another reason why it's so important. And, and I think we can see it as, it's kind of like a secret to forgiveness that we see in Jesus' example. You remember Jesus was hanging on a cross he was nailed to a cross. He was crucified and beaten and tortured by Roman soldiers who then nailed him to a cross. And, and we've mentioned this before, but what did he say? He said, Father, forgive them. Why? Because they don't know what they're doing. See, Jesus could see, like, these guys are, are, are really animals. They're, 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 they're twisted. They're warped. They're, they're sadistic. They're enjoying nailing this Jewish man to a cross and beating and destroying him and mocking him. And Jesus is like willing to forgive them because he looks at them and he sees this, this sin against me that they're committing is really the effect of a previous cause they were sinned against. They were hurt. They, they grew up in this society that wrecked them from the inside out. And all I'm getting is the overflow of their brokenness and hurt. And so it's, it's, it's to be expected. I can understand where it's coming from. You know, in my life, I remember uh, needing to forgive my father because he wasn't perfect. Like, I'm not perfect. <laughs> And I think my kids are going to need to forgive me in the future and in the present, probably. What I came to realize over time, just walking that out, you know, a hurt would surface to the top, and I would realize, you know, i got to forgive this. I've made a decision. I'm going to walk in forgiveness. I love my dad. I have a great relationship with him. I don't want these things. I don't want there to be bitterness, resentment, that sort of thing. Uh, I just had to make that decision because I started to see this anger in me and every once in a while it'd flash at my kids they'd trigger it and I could see where it came from and I realized oh my goodness that thing that anger that's coming from a place of hurt really a place of unforgiveness that needs to needs to be dealt with that is kind of causing pain to my kids that must have been the same kind of thing operating in my dad he didn't wake up and say I think I'll be hard on my son today. I think I'll hurt his feelings somehow. Something was triggered in him. What was it? If you keep going back, it's like the domino effect in reverse. We just keep looking back. Well, somebody wounded him. Well, how, why did they do that? Because somebody wounded them. Because somebody wounded them all the way back to Adam and the original sin where sin just comes in and messes everything up. There's this domino effect. 
And, and the other reason I think is super important for community that we forgive. Sometimes we need to forgive people who aren't even in community with us. Because when I bump up against you or you bump up against me and I have uh, anger, bitterness, unforgiveness in my heart, not, has nothing to do with you, but you bump up against me and all of a sudden you pay the price for some, what somebody else did. Have you ever experienced that? You know, with a husband or a wife or a friend or a, uh, you know, a parent or a sibling, like boss, like somebody, you know, you did something uh, unbeknownst to you and all of a sudden they, you get hot lava from them and you're like, whoa, what does that have to do with? And it's like, it's not personal. They have a lot of anger and resentment and things that need to be worked out of them and it begins with forgiveness and releasing the offender uh, from the jail that's in your heart. Like, release them, because you need that anger and the bitterness and resentment to go away. I call that the angry box. You guys can talk about that in your groups. Uh, the angry box is, and people have done this intentionally, and the person that said it uh, to me, they said, well, he just opened the angry box. And I'm like, what's the angry box? He's like, every time somebody does something to me, says something to me, I don't do nothing about it in the moment, but I stuff it down in my angry box. And every so often, someone comes and knocks the lid off that thing, and then they get what's in the angry box. And uh, a lot of us, if we're honest, we have an angry box. We have you know, stuff below the surface that we've stuffed down, we haven't forgiven, we haven't allowed the Father to get to the bottom of that wound in order to heal us. And so we go in, around with an angry box. And you want to know what? It's tough to be in community with people that aren't healed. We need to heal, and forgiveness is absolutely at the heart of it. I'm going to give you some discussion questions, and I'm going to pray us out. Today, our discussion questions are... Number one, have you ever experienced the freedom and healing that comes when we forgive someone who has hurt us? A few of you share your testimony, just a few. We can't all share our testimony. And, and to be honest, some of us have experienced that freedom and healing, and we have a story, a testimony, and some of us haven't opened up, and, and some of us have a lot of uh, forgiveness that still needs to take place. So I want us all to benefit from the victory that God has given one or the other. Number two, have you ever struggled to forgive somebody else? Uh, yeah, hello. Uh, how did God work in your heart to help you do what is so hard for us to do? Tell me about that process because in your testimony, there is so much healing and freedom that can come to others. We want to share Verse, uh, verse three. Number three, question three. Are there areas in your life where healing still needs to occur? Uh, probably yes. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you if there is somebody you need to forgive. This is an opportunity for revelation. I, I really believe in God to show us people that we need to forgive or that we made the decision to forgive, but as different hurts and things came to the surface or as they hurt us again, we kind of went back into that place of unforgiveness. And we need the Holy Spirit to constantly show us. And number four, pray together for God's grace to walk in forgiveness. Guys, there is so much more that we could say, and I desperately want to say, but I need to pray for us. I think God is going to show us, every one of us, you know, the truth is we grow in these things and it's not um, always easy, but I think as you get wins and as you forgive people that you've held on to bitterness for years, it, it clears the ground in your heart for God to heal and to do new things and we get better at it, we grow up in it, and we learn to walk in it. So that's what I want for you. That's what I want for me. That's what I want for real life. Let me pray for us. Father God, Lord, I thank you in your word. You told us to forgive 70 times 7, 490 times, like, like a complete and ridiculous amount of times. We need to forgive our brothers or sisters who hurt and offend us. 
We don't always have to be reconciled. We don't always have to be vulnerable to them. But we need to release them from punishment, release them from curse, speak blessing over them, and then release the anger and resentment that has built up in our heart for our own good and for theirs so that they're not under judgment. Lord, thank you that you've told us that the same judgment that we use with others is the judgment you're going to use with us. So, Lord, I pray Help us, Lord. Help us to grow today, every one of us, each of us where we're at, Lord. Help us to grow another step up in walking in community in a place of maturity because we have learned to forgive and we have learned the secret of forgiveness that people are hurting us out of their own hurts. Lord, give us insight. Give us Give us a vision to see where others need to be healed so that we can pray into that, Lord, but that you would give us compassion for those who have hurt us because they're just operating out of their own brokenness. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, show us what you want to show us. Hold up the mirror of your truth so we can see ourselves as you do. And Lord, thank you for brothers and sisters who are walking it out with us, who can pray with us. We bless you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, hey, guys, I forgive you for whatever you thought about my preaching (laughs) when we did this, but let's just walk it out. Let's walk it out, and uh, let's, you know, those of us who are leaders, let's show by example what it looks like to walk in forgiveness. Blessings to you. We'll see you soon.